kept you. I was counting the money. Again? Well, I don't want to bid for the thing, then find out later I don't have enough money to pay for it. Now, you sure you know what it is you're going to bid for? Uh-huh. Jock's Avatar trophy. And you'll recognise it when you see it? Of course I will. I polished it often enough. He's going to be so angry when he finds out we've saved it. Still, it'll be worth it. Uh, if it goes for £120 or less. It couldn't be worth any more than that, could it? Hope not. Anyway, come on. We're late already. Oh. Well, in my day, we were quite pleased to have a good excuse for being late for school. Things haven't changed that much, have they? <laughs> not them I'm worried about. I just don't want you to miss the Glasgow train. are a great disappointment to me, Mr. Forsyth. I am a great disappointment to myself, Isabel. I'd always thought of you as a man of the world, a bit of a ladies' man. In all modesty, so did I. But you still haven't asked Florence for a date. I can't get the chance, not with murder hanging around all the time. But you surely don't think she prefers his company to yours, do no, you? No, I do not, but his, his eyes sniffing around and she, she doesn't seem to mind. It's very odd. Well, perhaps she prefers his company to no company at all. And you haven't made your interest known yet, have you? No. You're right. Maybe I should just lay siege till I get a chance to speak to her alone. Faint heart never won, fair lady. I'll let you know how I get on. Ah, you do that. And good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Effie. Morning, Mr. Forsyth. Good luck with what? Oh, just a wee something Mr. Forsyth is working on. Affairs of the heart. Nothing that would interest you. Affairs of the heart, is it? Well, I'll tell you somebody else who's working on one of them. Inverdara. Fiona Cunningham. Oh, what's she up to? Up to Glasgow this morning to see that Mr. Goldbraith. Oh, why? They seem to get on very well last time he was here. Oh, like a house on fire. Oh, such a nice young man, Isabel. Such an awful nice young man. Right. Certainly seems to be plenty of romance in the air. Hmm, for some. Well, Cupid's not doing the rest of us any favours, is he? Isn't he? Well, my love life won't pick up while that lily woman staying with the tailors getting round in Vardarach with her fancy manners and her fancy ideas. My dear. I'll be glad to see the back of her. I expect, um... You feel the same way about our friend, Francis. Hmm? I, uh, I take it you're thinking about Donald's party tonight. What? No, no, I wasn't, as a matter of fact. Well, do you not think it's about time you were? Parties don't run themselves, you know. We don't even know how many are coming. Yes, we do. Oh, do we? Aye, it's 11 and counting Donald himself makes 12. And when did we find that out? He told me this morning when I took him down to meet the school bus. Well, thank you for letting me know. What does it matter anyway? We've got food enough for 12, haven't we? Yes, only because Morrigan Alice and I made enough. Have you thought what this place is going to be like with 12 children in it? We can shift the table back. They're only wee ones. 12 of them? And they'll be wanting to play at games, I suppose. Aye, that's right, Mother. What would a party be like without games? Ah, well, you better make sure they don't involve too much running around. I'll pass that on to Bob. Bob? Aye, he'll be organising that side of things. Does he know that? Well, not yet. I'll tell him when he comes. Dougal, could I ask you what you're doing for your son's party? We women have made the food. Donald has invited the guests. And it seems that Bob is to be organising the games. What's your contribution? I got the lemonade and the paper cups and the potato crisps. Aye, and then you went and sat on them. <laughs> Can I have a word, Mr. Snedden? What about in private? I don't mind her. She knows better than to repeat anything she hears in here. About poachers? You can go and get my niece's room ready now, Mrs. Russell. He said not to bother till later. And now I've changed my mind. Is that all right with you?
Okay, what's your problem? Being cited as a witness in a court case. I don't like it. And what exactly is it you don't like about it? What we're doing to Dougal Latlin. We're not doing anything to him. He shot a poacher. It's the law that's going to be doing things to him. But we know something that could help him. Do we now? And what exactly do we know? What if the poacher he shot was the same one that we had to run in with? If is a big word, Craig. You know it was the same man, do you? No. But he did threaten us with a gun. If it was the same man, now I don't know it was, and you just said you don't know. Oh, come off it, Mr. Stead, and the chances are that it was. The chances are there's a hell of a lot of deer poachers in Scotland. Not around here. Well, I tell you what, Craig. You go and find the two hoodlums we saw and ask them nicely if they were the ones that Lachlan shot at. And I will personally pay for your funeral arrangements. Difficult journey? No, it was fine. Until I had to decide which exit I wanted to take to leave the motorway. That's one of our hidden traps. I've known people drive right through the city and out the other side. I'm glad you didn't do that. Yes, so am I. Things well in Glendarrick? Well, as could be expected. Uh, well, no, not entirely. It's Dougal Lachlan, the uh, charge he's facing for shooting the poacher. Has he got a good lawyer? Yes. Can't help worrying about him, though. You know, you're beginning to sound like... <laughs> well, the way you've described your mother to me often enough. <laughs> Rubbish! Paternalistic, obsessive. You know, you should take the advice you're always offering her. Distance yourself a little. Well, today I have, haven't I? Yes. Today you're on my home territory. I have the day off, and we are going to make the most of it. We'll gather lilacs in the spring again. La -dee 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 -dee. Oh, come in. Oh, hello, Robert. Morning, Florence. Good morning. Mr. Murdoch not here. Oh, you've just missed him, but uh, I think he went up to the kennels if you want to see him there. Oh, no, it's it's quite all right. Well, he did say try to get back before the doctor's surgery begins. Actually, it was you I came to see, Florence. Oh, that was very nice of you, but I'm afraid I haven't time to stop and chat. I'm very busy just now, you see. Oh, I, I, I won't hold you back, but uh, there was uh, something I wanted to ask you. Yes? Though I'll quite understand if you'd rather not. Rather not what, Robert? Have dinner with me at the Octane some evening. Oh, I'd love to. You would? <laughs> yes, I would. Oh, that's fine. Thank you very much. Grand, thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Robert. Oh, hello. Oh, who's this? Dr. Wallace, I presume. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? <laughs> Mrs. Mag's sister? That's right. Don't you think I look like her? No, I don't. Oh, well, that's a pity. Everybody has such a high regard for Mary. I'm sorry to be such a disappointment to you. Oh, Florence, you aren't. Was it me you came to see, Robert? Uh, no, no, I, I <laughs> just dropped by. I think I'd better be on my way. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Actually, Robert came to see me. Oh, yes. To ask me to have dinner with him. Wasn't that kind? Oh, very. <laughs> and uh, you accepted? Of course I did. Why should I refuse? Why, indeed. 
You know, now I look at you, I do detect a slight facial resemblance to your sister. But there, I think, any comparison ends. Yeah, Brad. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you been out? Yes, I didn't go far. I suppose you'll be going out this afternoon? Yes, I suppose so. Look, Brian, I don't want to interfere, but... Which means you're going to. You don't think it might be better if you gave it a miss today? Didn't see Miss Kay? I don't think Miss Kay is any of your business. You must know how you're hurting, Isabel. She's very close to breaking, you know. <laughs> I don't think there's anything I can do that would break Isabel. She's tougher than you think. No, you're wrong. At the moment, she's not tough at all. With Jimmy away, she needs you. Uh, she's got a funny way of showing it. Perhaps you've got a funny way of showing you need her. Look, Frank, the last thing I want at the moment is your Lonely Hearts Club advice. I'm sorry, I just don't like to see two people damaging each other like this. Uh -huh. But the person you're really concerned about is Isabel, isn't oh, it? Oh, for God's sake. So when Brian. I go out this afternoon, when I go out, I know that you'll have somebody to keep her company. So, have you got everything ready for the party? Well, mm. we're as ready as we'll ever be, Bob. Has he told you how many are coming? You're making an awful fuss about that, Mother. How many? Just 12, <laughs> and that's including Donald. 12? In here? No, I... Well, they'll just have to play quiet games, that's all. Dougal, kids that age don't know any quiet games. Once they've scoffed their lemonade and their cakes and their crisps, they'll go wild. Well, you'll just have to organise quizzes and things they have to sit and think about. I will. Ah, you'll be in charge of the games. It's up to you to control them. Well, I'm flattered you think I could do that, but I'm afraid I'm not going to be there. What? I've made other arrangements. I said you should have asked him sooner. You'd no right going making other arrangements when you knew it was Donald's party. Well, that's just what I thought it was, Donald's party, with as few adults around as possible. I'll maybe drop in later and see how things are going. Oh, don't trouble yourself. Oh, you'll manage fine, Dougal. After all, you are the boy's father. No. Better be going for my own dinner. Bye, Mrs. Lachlan. Bye, Bob. Oh, and uh, good luck, Dougal. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that, eh? Bob and Alice get me to organise a party for Donald. It'll be the best party Glendarek's ever seen, they see. And then they'll leave me to do all the donkey work. <laughs> the university. One of them, surely? The one I went to. The university. We could take a walk round it, if you like. What's the alternative? Lunch. I did have a very early breakfast. I can take a hint. Lunch it is. <laughs> Wonderful. And after lunch, we'll take a look at the Burrow Collection and Pollock House. you away for another walk? Aye, only as far as the village hall. I want to see Dr. Wallace. Why, aren't you feeling well? No, I feel fine. That's the point. How do you mean? Well, I think I feel fit enough to get back to work. I just want the doctor to confirm it. But I thought you were told to take a month off work. Well, my doctor in town hadn't bargained on the effect of all the good food and fresh air I've had here. Frank, what's happened? Oh, I've made a faster recovery than was expected. That's what's happened. Has Brian said something? I, um, I think it's time that I left you both to get on with your lives. 
He has said something. No, Isabel, he said nothing. It's just that I felt for a long time that my presence is making a, a difficult situation more difficult. Not for me. I don't know what I'd have done without somebody to... somebody to talk to. Well, you could try talking to Brian. But the way he's been behaving recently? Anyway, I've no reason to believe he'd want to talk to me. He might, if I weren't here. I tell you what'll happen if you go away. I'll be left sitting through there while he's out with that woman. I just don't know how long I can take that without... But without walking out on him. I mean that, Frank. Well? I'm impressed. I thought you would be. But it does need more than one visit, doesn't it? Can be arranged? <laughs> yes, but not too soon. How are your feet standing up? Oh, probably better than yours. I imagine I do a great deal more walking than you ever do, Rory. Oh. You won't mind walking through the park to Pollock House? Only if you let me take your arm. century or two. Yes, I think they win on paintings and furniture too. Mind you, they don't have effort to do the dusting. <laughs> I like it here. Yes, it's lovely. It's all the countryside I need. And it's only 20 minutes from the center of the city. The afternoon's nearly over. And there's so much more I still want you to see. It isn't Glasgow I came to see you, really. Put the fire on in your niece's room. Don't There's no need to do that. I don't think that room's been used for years. It's a bit damp. And I expecting her. I'm meeting her after four o'clock ferry. Wouldn't it be better if you met her off the train at Ochtan? No, it wouldn't. Just thought it would make her feel more welcome. She isn't welcome. Your own niece? Look, let's get one thing clear. I didn't invite her here. Her parents want her away from home for a while because she's been keeping bad company. A boyfriend. Very likely. So you see, I'm stuck with her for the time being. But as far as I'm concerned, she eats here and sleeps here. She doesn't get any special treatment. I don't want her here any longer than needs be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Mr. Snedden. Right, you can get dressed now, Mr. Thompson. Have you been taking it easy, as per instructions? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, oh, I've been going long walks, of course, but uh, mainly I've just been sitting about reading or digesting as a, uh, Mrs. Blair's excellent meals. Long walks? Well, about uh, two or three miles at the most. You call that taking it easy? Well, I thought the fresh air and exercise would be good for me. Well, they are, but in smaller doses. Are, are you under some kind of stress, worrying about something? Well, only about whether or not you'll give me a clearance to get back to work, but I, I don't think you will, will you? No. And I won't until you understand the difference between resting and training for a marathon. See. Come see me again next week. And meanwhile, take it easy. Well, thanks, Doctor. Right. Bye. Bye now. That 
That was the last patient, Doctor. Oh, thank goodness for that. You know, I haven't had as busy a surgery as that for long enough. Could you do with a wee cup of tea? That would be very acceptable, thank you. Oh, no. Mr. Murdoch, it's long past surgery hours. It certainly is. I thought you'd be away long ago. Oh, ever since it's urgent. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is, but it's for uh, Miss Crossan I want to speak to. What is it, Arthur? It's not something I care to discuss with you at the moment. But I have to say it is a very grave matter. Very grave indeed. I'll come back later. You seem to be in great demand today. I do, don't I? And <laughs> then, Mr. Johnson. Cheerio. Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. Well, Isabel. I've done it. Have you now? Miss Crossan has agreed to have dinner with me. Well, there you are, then. I don't know what all the hesitation was about. And you know, what pleased me most about it was the expression on old Murdoch's face when I told him. <laughs> Sour, like a crab apple. Oh, Mr. Forsyth, I'm surprised at you. Mark my words, Isabel, it'll be a one-horse race from now on. Hello. Hello. Um, Fran, what did the doctor say? He doesn't seem to agree with me about how much better I am. So you'll not be going away, then? No. Oh, well, I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me a little longer. <laughs> uh, Mr. Thompson was thinking he might be well enough to go back to his work, but uh, I was pretty sure he wasn't. Ah, uh, it's always a mistake to go back too soon. Yeah, that's what I told him. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad that Dr. Wallace agreed. <clears throat> He's a very pleasant chap, Isabel. Yes, he is. Uh -huh. it's, been, uh, it's been fine for me to have somebody to talk to, you know, when Brian's been out. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yeah, I've lived long enough in Glendarek to know the gossip that goes on. And what evil tongues can make of perfectly innocent friendships. I know, I know. It's just that Frank needs my... my care just now. In fact, it seems to me he's the only one that does. <laughs> 